try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total protonic reversal. Protonic reversal. Protonic reversal with your host, Conan Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A gigantic middle finger to everything that is rock about music, rock and roll, and corporate power. The thing is, though, if you don't laugh, you're going to go on a killing spree with shot and nails. Confidence of a hero or a fool. I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. It's all That's like a science thing, right? Indeed, indeed, indeed it is. It is a science thing, is a science place, is a scientific fact that we are all up in your faces. Time once again for the one, the only Protonic Reversal. Welcome to it, welcome to it, welcome to it. Very special episode for you tonight, episode 352. We're going to... We're gonna get down to it with. Uh, we're gonna take a museum visit, a Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum, and I could not be more excited to talk to these scions of world building, myth making, uh, music, sorcery. Uh, make of it what you will. I'm, I'm as longtime listeners of the show know, I am from the Bay Area, and so these. This band was very uh, ubiquitous is the wrong term, but they were around in all the right places, and I just could not be more overjoyed that they're back. We're going to talk about why they're back, what's going on, and perhaps unravel a few mysteries of the universe. But before we do that, before we do that, welcome to Conan Neutron's Protonic Reversal. I am your host, Conan Neutron. I'm a rock and roll lifer who's been touring and recording for 23 years, most known for the band Conan Neutron and the Secret Friends. Music is a huge part of my life, and I use the format of this very long-running podcast. I talk about music with musicians whose work I enjoy and respect, but who may not be household names. This is episode 352. If this is your first time listening to the show. Archives are available for free. No ads, no sponsors, no kidding, at protonicreversal.com. However, if you want to support the show and get episodes sooner, $1 a month at patreon.com slash protonicreversal will achieve that goal. Now, if you like the show or even just a single episode, please feel free to like, subscribe on your platform of choice, share it around on the internet, and even leave a review. All that helps people discover the show, beats back the almighty algorithmic overlords, and it's just a darn nice thing to do. So there you go. The year 2023. The band, Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum. They're back, baby! That's right. I'd like to, at this point in time, uh, welcome... Michael Mills, welcome, welcome Hello. to the show. Hello, hello, ho, ho. Hi. I want, want you guys to be in the bigger square, not me. So, although, oh, well, we're in a bigger square. Yeah. <laughs> you should, you yeah. should come over sometime. Yeah, no, the square uh, here is. I'm more of a rhombus guy, but it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a nice, it's a nice square. Yeah. It's a nice square. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm thrilled that, you, that is it reconvening? Is it uh, what? What? That's I'm, a nice well, reconvening. Oh. That, the, yeah. That's a you know, such an exciting way to put it, you know, guys. But that, that was what we had a meeting. We said, guys, we should reconvene, you know, and everybody was like, I'm psyched about the reconvening. Yeah. So, yeah. I, and it's not as if everybody individually or in other parents and uh, groups haven't been active and uh, haven't been creating, of course. Right. Uh as for instance, if for people maybe the uninitiated, you know, free salamander, for instance, right? That's that's a that's sure. Obviously, the same. Uh, you know, the genus and subspecies of the bands are not that much different if you're looking at the sure. the table of beastery. Sure. Beastery, beastery. Sure. I, not. Buddy. There's another word I could say. I'm not going to go for it. Uh, but I think the story of Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum is an interesting one because there's such a rich world for that band and for all the records uh the imagery the live presentation like everything about it so very so very thoughtful and present for anybody willing to engage with it 
uh, like a sense of a, a adventure that went beyond just being a band. Uh, and, and I don't, don't mean to project any of this, of course, but I find it lovely because I feel like we live in very unmysterious times. Mm. And I like the fact that there's a Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum gearing up to do things because that, that, that's just a nice kind of left field, holy cats, what? What's happening now? Uh, kind mm. of moment, of which we don't get that many of. And I, I, what did, what all... How did that all transpire? How did it come back under the Sleepy Time Grill Museum moniker? And then I want to talk about the Kickstarter and 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 the, you know those mechanisms, those utilitarian mechanisms as well. But let's just start for conceptually uh, the reconvening. Well, we we had some unfinished business which we always intended to do. Our our sort of dissolution was um, more sort of life circumstantial than like, okay, we're all done doing, we've said all we have to say, we've got to go our separate ways. It was more, um, you know, a couple of the band members who are East Coast folks. And once their, uh, you know, their, their life path with the, with yeah. the chillins got to a certain point, you know, being being closer Unable to the East Unable to Coast. drive down the street to the rehearsal room. It would have taken like a few days or something for those guys. Right. Um, sure. Sure. So yeah. Carla and Matthias, the violinist and drummer, um, still live on the East Coast. Now we uh, we we parted with you know tearful hugs and hey we'll we'll finish all this stuff up in a little bit. We had this unfinished album. We had a, a film that was unfinished, and we sort of had continued to work on some things and little bits and pieces and actually sort of in 2019 gearing up for 2020 there was talk of what is happening now yeah and we were like, yeah, okay, yeah like, maybe 2020 will be our like yeah long. that's our year yeah. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. and, and right. narrator voice it wasn't yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no no not to be and then and then we had this um mysterious problem of uh this this film that we had shot sure uh that had the sort of most elaborate shoot of the film this dance number with lots of cameras and lots of extras and um lots of lots effort of, lots of dancing lots of yeah. choreography yeah. yeah um like rooftop cameras and uh, right. just like a lot of people struggling to do the dance that you couldn't dance um and uh th that footage um was kind of like the crowning or just like oh my god i cannot wait to see that uh, but um right. the drive itself had somehow gotten corrupted the the housing of the whatever was housing that um that the, the actual hard drive that. not the yeah drive yeah, yeah. so it, right. it became painfully painfully close to being just like extinguished yeah. forever but um yeah. somebody knew uh like a kind of like forensic data Scientologist. That, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the term. I'm not yeah. sure, but yeah. Um, so we we saved it, as it were. Yeah, from from description, it sounds like along the lines of, you, of your version of like the red shoes or something along those lines, where just like this incredible. You know, you just have to see it on a like a screen, right? Like you have to, you have to, you have, you have to like not, and hopefully the screen isn't like you know your phone, uh, as Dave, David Lynch gets really agitated when people watch ah, films on his phone it's like have you ever right. been in an airplane that's kind of like what you're <laughs> right you yeah. Have to do. I've, yeah i've seen that david lynch clip watch a yeah. movie on your fucking telephone uh, <laughs> get real <laughs> peace and love we love david lynch but yes, yes we do. uh so so getting back to what you're saying and the, the locational uh challenges uh, presented themselves as far as being a, a a regular process, but it wasn't as if it was like, hey, let's spin down the band. It was just more of a logistical concern. Yeah, and we had it actually been the case for maybe the last year or almost a year or something of our of our existence as a functioning band, right. but where they were living on the East Coast and we would fl fly in, meet places quickly, sort of, get the uh get yeah. the hits up and running yeah. and we felt ourselves becoming quickly a sort of greatest hits version of ourselves which was never really what we uh you know the, it was it was always about endless amounts of rehearsal 
And so unable to do that, all of a sudden we were, we were like the set list just kind of got whittled down. And yeah. yeah, so we, with, for the dignity of, of the work that we had put in over the years to sort of putting together elaborate shows, elaborate music, right. we, were, we, were, we were always about, you know, the, the effort, show your work, America. You know, so the vision. Um, I mean, it is yeah. a vision, right? Because yeah. I still yeah. remember, and this must have been two thousand one, two thousand two, 2002, uh, seeing Sleepy Time at. I thought I, I had in my mind as Bob in the Hill. I think it was actually the Metro, uh, mm. but it was the first time I'd heard you do Donkey Headed Adversary. Mm. And and that was one of the, the first times that, that was like, oh, wow, like this is not, this is dense. This is like <laughs> great. And then it turns out that's like one of the more straightforward songs, right? On that record. But like, <laughs> that's four on the floor, you know, no, <laughs> nothing to it really. You know, after, you know, you rehearse it enough time yeah. to where it becomes just basically like, you know, yeah. So there's like a reliance of almost everybody like having the muscle memory of like, of doing the songs that, you know, bring joy to people because they want to hear the songs and yeah, doing this. I mean, it's not a Vegas stage show or anything, but it's not, it's certainly not in the, in the mindset of a band that constantly was evolving and changing and pushing boundaries of existence necessarily uh, to, to be playing more or less the same set when you go and, and do things. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, and and there there's fairly regularly some kind of theatrical element. Also, no, we most of us had been working on and off during that same time period with um, sh with Shinichi and his dance troupe, uh, Ink Boat, around mm. around the Bay Area and, and elsewhere. We've been to Europe and um, yeah, doing this, you know. What at what had initially started out as sort of a buto dance uh, troupe, which is um, yeah, if you're not familiar with it, it's like a form that started in the '60s in Japan. Yeah, um, not a traditional form, but like a, a sort of extreme modern form involving. Really uh, cool though, just yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, really yeah. incredibly visual. I mean, I guess all dance yeah. is visual, right? But uh, right, <laughs> like right. Yep. In unorthodox ways, or ways that, that maybe traditional sensibilities might not be able to immediately understand. Yeah. Uh, so, and again, and I'm glad you bring that up, because I always felt that as much as Sleepy Time Grill Museum presented as a band, it was almost like a multimedia experience, right? It was Sometimes. Just, there, yeah. there was like, like some bands are an assault on the senses. I, I never felt that it was, the, an assault was necessarily the point, but it was definitely... You, well, it was actually. No. I mean, just sometimes for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. but in a way that you know, uh, again, one some some people can uh, look at a destructive storm and and see only horror, and some see beauty. You know, it's all in the yeah. eye of the beholder, right? Or the eye of the storm, <laughs> really. Right. And uh, so it just seems to me that like that's that's just a natural outgrowth, except for the fact that uh, this the the time period of. Sleepy Time's peak operation. I feel that there are tools available now that just were not available then. Uh, mm. You know, be they remote collaboration tools, be they, uh, right. you know, sure. Like, any, anything L LED, um, LED lighting. Uh, yeah. Tool that we're talking about, like um, mm. going on the road potentially next year, um, and that's like we used to just like lug these like giant theater cans with us right. that would point like directly into our face. Um, not uh, disallowing you from seeing your instrument entirely. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. Yes, and have course, this, yeah. like, we'd unfurl this giant snake of, um, a, a, like, a matted together, like, extension cord matrix that would yeah. go. And we'd have to know how, which circuit to plug into and whatnot. Um, yeah, there was many times when it, it we required a 220 outlet. So we would actually run oh, wow. this giant snake out of the building and into a neighboring laundromat. Right. You know, or, or, or like, <laughs> sure. Which, and, and or, for or those up the are... fire escape and into the, Oh yeah, there's a laundry, you know, up on the third floor. It's like, okay, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. And for um, those not, yeah. not versed in electric electricity or we're not the son of electrician, such as myself, that is yeah. a much higher power uh, yield that, than um, your traditional outlet that people think of yeah. like a household oh, yeah. outlet and, and more unorthodox uh, right. to be sure. But yeah, as a show, there's a lot of things drawn power, you know, yeah. there's a lot of, and, and that logistically, 
I mean, I guess everybody has in their mind, especially if they're remotely art- artistic, that's like, oh, well, we're playing Carnegie, you know, won't be a problem. You know, well, sure, but it's not always Carnegie Hall. Right. Yes, I, I come to mind a show in Phoenix, Arizona, where it was either the sound or the lights. And we it took us like most of the show to figure that out. We're like, ah, right. You know, okay, you hit the, you hit, hit the cans. Boom. The PA goes down. Like, okay, wait, oh, we got the PA right. back up. Boom. <laughs> lights go out. Okay. We're playing in the dark and like bring the lights back up. Boom. Sound goes out. Like, ah, I see this is a either or situation. And yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and you don't want to sacrifice your art but the question is yeah you have to make difficult choices at, at times like that right because yeah. you're dealing with the reality of the moment and then you know there's there's the idea of the you know what the spectacle anyway right you know, so yeah. it's, well what kind of spectacle do you want do you want a noiseless one or do you want a lightless one <laughs> yeah you want to see, yeah, see it or you want to listen <laughs> yeah. which one is more important well i mean yeah. ideally both but uh so tell me tell me about the last human or was the last human being hmm. right that's yeah. the uh I, i'm fascinated by this and, and i'd like to go uh i'd like to do a little time travel as well and talk about the older records but i think it's in the spirit of the band to talk about the now as well uh and i'm thrilled about it so so what what can you tell me about, about this because there's a there's a is a kickstarter i'm gonna actually put it in the chat now so i don't forget about it but i'll definitely put it in the show notes later um and we will get to that but first before we get into any of that Last human being. Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum of the Last Human Being, the record, um, was just finished last night. So um, <laughs> that is topical. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A very, very current <laughs> events. Um, yeah. Um, do, 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 breaking news. Yeah. <laughs> this is the record that we started in 2010, right. um, which is uh, grew out of a stage show that we toured uh with our uh friend and dancer shinichi koga um um and so it's the material from that and then um all sorts of other things but uh yeah just new newly finished last night after much um tweaking hemming and hawing uh, yeah. <laughs> committee after years of hemming and hawing right, right. finally going to yeah <laughs> yeah so it's it, is that where there's just dithering and changing things around or is, is was it, you know, just making sure everyone's happy with it? Well, it was a matter of, of like, like, there was like vocal, like finished vocals to be put onto tunes to where, you know, all the guitars were all laid down, things like that, like just missing parts, stuff that had never, you know, been, been finished. And that was a really interesting challenge going and putting vocals on like, you know, fast and crazy music where it was like, ah, Right. Where, hmm, where do the vocals go in this, you know, like <laughs> yeah. onslaught of, oh, let's see, what was, what were we thinking at the time, you know? Um, right, you have this very dense composition and you want to yeah. not then, detract, but yeah. we never laid a guide track, huh? Okay. Yeah. So there, yeah, there were some yeah. exciting, yeah. exciting times at the old studio. And then some, some brand new material that was, you know, just, just written and, and recorded in the last few months. So as, as the excitement of like, well, we're really going to do this. Are we really, okay. We're really going to actually finish this. Okay. Well then, but then we need some new songs, right? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, just, uh, yeah. So there, there's a, actually just a, a handful of the songs, half, half the songs maybe were directly from the stage show, the last human being stage show that then became uh, the film. So the, the basis for the, as part for the of a live picture. tour. Mm-hmm. We had this big cage that you know Shinichi would be hung in, and we would you know he'd be hanging upside down, sort of shadow lit for the first half hour of the show because he can do that. Just wow. uh, and then uh, you know we'd reveal him, sing about him, poke him with a stick, and uh, have a have a scientific conference about his possible reality or not. You know, and so. You know, it was a, uh, yeah, I could, I could get into further, like what, what the, what the sort of roots of the, of the story, but. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't necessarily want you to give away the story, but I mean, this is a long form format. So mm. I'm just saying, if you, if there was a place to do it, you, I am welcome and interested as, mm-hmm. as a nerd for not just your music, but all things bizarre, uh, 
science and 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 things that are not yet understood to be science so yeah just saying <laughs> well that yeah things that are, so that that relates to the the backstory of the last human being um touches upon the non-science of phrenology mm. um, the study of skull shape as oh, yes. uh, as a clue to um you know what's inside the the mind of right. the the possessor of the skull that was a um prominent uh sort of new scientific uh field uh debatable debatably scientific but there was somebody um around the turn of the century just just afterwards who was prominent at the smithsonian who um when the last wild man in north america ishi uh, who had walked out of the uh, sort of Mount Lawson foothills, starving in 1914, and became almost immediately a living museum exhibit at the newly created Museum of Anthropology in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And um, admiring throngs would show up to watch him uh, start friction fires with two sticks and flake arrowheads and demonstrate his Stone Age skills. And um, so this is, you know, 1914, 15, 16. Um, people would come from all over the country, you know, and there's pictures of, you know, ladies in their gigantic merry widow hats, you know, and their sure their traveling hat up yeah. the chin and, you know, like, Hmm, you know, it's seeing the, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or, or instead of being horrifying, it suddenly became a wonderful curiosity, a curiosity. Sure. Right. right. But really only a couple years separate that from um, the, the time period when it was in California, open season on, you know, it was like a dollar a scalp kind of action yeah. until Ishii was uh had at the time of his you know 1914 had spent maybe decades absolutely alone up there surviving yeah. um and being the only speaker of his language which is a uh, yeah a special thing to be and so he um the the museum of anthropology was immediately next door to UCSF hospital and for a social life, he would go over and visit the patients at the hospital. Mm. And he apparently learned, you know, enough English to, you know, have, have, have some a conversation. And yeah. yeah sure. And um, in the, in the course of doing that, he, he got uh, tuberculosis himself, oh. passed away in 1916. Um, whereupon, Phrenology comes into play. Right. Uh, this fellow at the Smithsonian was like, heard about it because he, he became very quickly famous. Ishii was very famous at, at that point. And uh, he, I, mean, I can't remember his name. He has a Dutch name. I'm not blaming the Dutch or anything, but the good people, good. Heavens, good. no. Yes. Yeah. Great. No, after all. Great. Mr. Great herring. <laughs> great herring. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Melander here is not so very far from the Dutch himself. Uh, yes. Um, but uh, the uh, he arranged to have Ishii's skull um, brought to the Smithsonian and to be analyzed and tested Can't for wait you know, to get my hands on that skull. yeah you know, like, <laughs> this, this completes my collection of ten thousand testicles or right or what is that line from from holy mountain but yeah um, oh, yeah right. um so yeah so he that that went out there and then um and then he and then this fellow passed away and phrenologies passed away you know quietly but like oh <clears throat> yeah never mind that was a, a wrong turn yeah i know it was, right right science for a minute but it's not really we science kidding. <laughs> so 
Yeah, well, yeah, because normally when people mention phrenology now, it's it's literally just the race science aspect and like you know th- th- that very <laughs> salacious appropriation of something for a preconceived set of, I guess you could call them values, uh, thought process, and w- which is a shame because if you think about the the avenue of discovery and the wrong turns one has to take. Uh, maybe to to get to the that it's people only like to celebrate the successes, of course, right? But it's it's um, it is interesting. The Mutter Museum is something I think about, you know, mm. with with with, with uh, when I think about that kind of thing, which is just which I've heard they're they're breaking apart, selling off the exhibits, which is oh, pretty that's sad. Bad. Um, yeah, we'll have to, I have to get there before that happens. Uh, it's 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 worth a visit, like, and it's worth giving some serious time for it because it, it's um. It's 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 fairly comprehensive, and if you're if if you're interested in that kind of thing, uh, and I just think that that's I don't know I think that's worth it's worth exploring because we don't we don't necessarily want approved wonder. <laughs> that's not how wonder works. Mm. Yeah. So you think that you're you're saying that this is our chance to get a two headed skeleton? I. I mean, it's worth an ask. Act, act now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah you guys, are you ask. doing anything with that two-headed so, skeleton? So, what's where's yeah, that yeah. one going? Anywhere? Yeah. Is yeah. it? Can it? Can it tour? Yeah. What's his work schedule like? Right. <laughs> mm. uh, so, okay. So, a lot of the, these ideas are integrated. So, at the time of yeah, so this the story of Ishi, uh, I was I was really kind of obsessed with that story at that time. And, you know, the and its potential for comedy. Uh, it's such a sad story, but I thought, sure, yeah, well, but there's got to be a grain of humor in there for us now, you know, yeah, all yeah. these years later. And so, um, yeah, uh, it sort of transformed into this last human being in, in a way. It was like the, a, a comedic resetting of that story as a as a vaudeville stage show. Right. Um, yeah. So, okay. So then uh, I think there's a lot of interest in, uh, I mean, there, there are these television shows of, of varying uh, value and production, both production values and general value uh, about ostensibly anthropological concepts, if not mm-hmm. actual anthropology. Uh, in the way that there are there are shows that investigate crime that are more or less crime adjacent and, and more just on the salacious aspects of it. Uh, but what I mean is that the there's more interest in popular culture uh, about those types of topics than there have been in a very long time. And I'd say the peak time actually would have been, you know, the, the 1910s, 1920s, uh, that that period. But that said, it always is somewhat fraught with the framing of it being associated with the horrific mm. you know like that, that there's it's a chamber of horrors it's a you know there's, there's something nefarious going on people like dr moreau or yeah. you, know, so, you know or even if they can't articulate what exactly it is uh it, it, when you're exploring these uh what is it the, the anthropocene is that what you what mm. the appropriate objective is topics is there any is there any fear of being misunderstood maybe about some of the aspects of things or is it just bravely putting the foot forward and let the art be what it is? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's always the danger of being misunderstood. Um, And there's, you know, various topics where, you know, in our, that we could be seen as uh, reactionary, you know? Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I I've long sort of welcomed the uh, you know the riding that playful edge. If they're yeah. buying tickets to the circus. They're still buying tickets to the circus, right? Yeah, <laughs> to, to a certain degree. And also, there's nothing wrong with being challenged as well. But mm-hmm. these are these are times that can be fraught for certain ideas and for certain phrasing. And I I, I feel like. Uh, certainly in, in the built world of Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum and everything that that you've done, I think it would be, it, first of all, it's very difficult to take anything out of context uh, because there's so much context. Like context is, is the universe. And 
I, I just I just think about that because some of the best uh, Holy Mountain, right? Perfect example. Amazing film, like just iconic film. Like I, honestly, not that many films like it. Um, and you know, Jodorowsky was not super concerned with the uh, <laughs> with what the community would think, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, some 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 imagery was focused in on laser like from that movie, almost. Which is like, yeah, that's like two minutes of of. <laughs> Of this incredibly long film that is basically sensory overload for uh, most multiple hours, uh, but I feel like now there are aspects of our culture that almost reward people uh, cherry picking images, recontextualizing them, and making make it into part of a story. Mm -hmm. uh, so therefore, for me, it's encouraging to, to hear about all this and hear that oh no, this it's going to be this is going to be just as dense, just as. Um, just as built up of a universe as as anything because that's that's my love language i love that stuff which <laughs> which to be explicitly clear you'll never be a millionaire by catering a cone of neutron but that said uh i there's obviously an audience for it and an appetite for it and uh it's exciting because i think everything that you guys have done has has come from a very informed place that again when asked about these things you can you can explain about them to anyone who was interested uh speak to it very eloquently and 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 talk of at least the questions being raised if not the conclusions and the sleepy time gorilla museum is a nuanced band we do not live in nuanced times mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah the big, and, um, mention of of, of <laughs> reactionary and um subjects potentially controversial i have to we have to mention the the recent passing of ted kaczynski of course uh, yeah the unabomber who who figured into one of our earlier uh debates and and, and, uh, and if anyone has actually read his manifesto it's sort of like oh wow like you know it's probably not what you thought it was <laughs> oh no, it's it's very it's cogent and well argued um that's that's the difficult thing is like, yeah. wow, there's so much about, um, you know, I, I, I was sort of discovering that his his I just found that in a bookstore. I was like, oh, yeah, what is this? Yeah. And I was looking like, oh, wait, this is that the Unabomber manifesto. OK. And it's actually the copy I have is actually one that was published before he was caught. So it's not oh, attributed to anyone, mm -hmm. but but FC, which was what was a little inscription on some of the bomb casings and he had and on was just the initials FC and he never explained what that was the FC but it was sure. it was surmised at one point that it meant the freedom club and so yeah. we had in, we titled our song of, about him and yeah um, yeah oh wow his kind of anti technology stance that he that he took the the freedom club but um yeah he is a he's another like really interesting uh american story oh 100 percent, yeah absolutely yeah and, and and again it's to be explicitly clear we're not just saying you do indeed have to hand it to ted kaczynski but i one <laughs> one can appreciate the art and, and, right and appreciate the thought behind it and not condone the actions that are obviously almost right. Like, just he was like bringing up, <laughs> bringing up valuable points. Yeah, in, in, absolutely. In a, in a, you know, in a fairly horrific way saying that like, look, if uh, the only way to get this topic in, into the public eye yeah. is we're going to have to kill people. It, That's it, he says as much in his manifesto and, you know, um, and really, you know, what it what it brought to the public eye was the incredible, you know, years long manhunt for this, you know, right. hermit living in the mountains of M Montana. But um, but, you know, the stuff stuff sneaks out and and it was just on the sort of. I, I want to say this sort of the, the wave where it became clear that the internet and personal computers and little little gadgets were really on the on the way it was not as not a novelty and that it was really coming to stay and that 
is kind of the time where I encountered his little book. And, and I was having my, as I long had, harbored reservations about the coming, uh, the new world as it was sure. starting to unfold. And, you know, um, I was, uh, I had moments of great skepticism. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> Which turns out we're very well founded. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's amazing because yeah, with, within, you know, his doctrine, right. It's, it's sort of, there's the idea of controversialization and then also, um, like the Eisenberg principle, the act of observing something, changing it. Uh, and, and then of course the, the cruelty uh, of that is like, well, nobody remembers any of that. Nobody, <laughs> you know, if you ask the average person about Ted Kaczynski, right. you know, you know, they're, you're, they're not going to think about that. So it's, right. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 deeply American, I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and downright biblical. Uh, Cain and Abel. His yeah. His the the only reason he was caught. The FBI and the the manhunt. They had no clues. They had no clues that were leading yeah. in the right direction. They were. He had he had made. He had left no trace of anything purchased. He made his own screws. To right. assemble these things. Yeah, he yeah. left no trace. He was very meticulous. He was, uh, you know, a math genius who had, at, for his dissertation, when he was quite young, he was, you know, getting his like PhD at age 20 or 21 or something. And there was only five people in the world that could read his dissertation and decide right. if it made any sense at all. So he was right. this super math genius. And then he was out at UC Berkeley. Um, Mr. Right, Kaczynski. Yes. <laughs> right next to People's Park, living, you know, on Hillegas, right next yeah. to the park during the People's Park riots. And he was this, you know, m math genius, sort of semi asocial, you know, creature who was like trying to like pass as a math professor. Because what can you do right. if you've written a dissertation that only five people can read? You could teach mm -hmm. at UC Berkeley. That's great. But he was not prepared for what was happening there, the social upheaval, the political, you know, crisis that was turning into a war across the street from his house. So he kind of freaked out uh, during the end, ended out quitting the school went and became a hermit and started working on his ideas about what was wrong <laughs> with the world. Well, and it's one of the many things I, I used to work on the at, at a record store in, in in Berkeley, and like it's one of the things I would think of when, when I would pass People's Park. I mean, oh, yeah. Much in the same way that if, if I was in uh, you know uh, uh, Albany, uh, California, I would be like, oh, Philip K. Dick lived there. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, like it, it's like one of the only things that like that city is kind of known for, and like most people are probably like, who who is that? Uh, but if you know. <laughs> Philip K. Dick, the author. Oh, oh Philip K. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I was uh, going through his, uh, like, a bunch of, like, a collection of his letters, and it turns out that he worked at a music store that I worked at, like, like years, years, years later. I was just like, wow. oh, man, I'm going to find, like, the lost writings of Philip K. Dick that he right. buried in a sousaphone in 1963. <laughs> yeah, it's, or it's like hidden behind an ELO record or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like sl slid underneath one of the, the oh, yeah. shelves. <laughs> So there's a uh, having having little to do with Ted Kaczynski. Uh, there, there's a word, there's there's a word that that is associated uh, with Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum. I have never heard it spoken aloud, but it's a very mysterious and cool sounding word. And I was wondering uh, if you could maybe uh, shed some light on this word. Ambugaton. Uh, Ambugat. That's if I was I was gonna say it, and and I would have gotten it right, but you have to take my word on that because I'm I, I my name is Conan. And my name has been mispronounced almost my entire life until Conan O'Brien became popular. So I always am very sensitive oh. to pronunciation, mm. uh, thusly. But as, th we're not making this about me. I want to know what that what, what what does that mean? What is that? Why why is that uh, associated with mm. the band? This uh, these times. What what yeah. is the what's well? The it's a simple, elaborate story. It's a simple explanation, <laughs> but I'm afraid it's an elaborate story. It's. Um, so the, the simple answer is that Ambugaton is Armageddon. Yeah. As pronounced, ah, as, as doubly mispronounced, <clears throat> a chain right. of, a, a double chain of mispronunciation, uh, starting with the great Hank Williams, father of country music in some respects, mm -hmm. um, 
all the way from the gates of Eden to the Battle of Ambugatan. Yeah, so that's a line oh. in um, in, a, in a Hank Williams song. All the way from the gates of Eden to the Battle of Ambugatan, there'll be trouble in your lifetime. There'll be hell yeah. upon that day. So, um, and I just I just love the Battle of Ambugatan. I just thought that was you know really wonderful and so that yeah. that that word replaced armageddon years earlier for for many of us um it's still not a word though like even when hank williams was using it you know? yeah is it like some form of begotten or something Ambu like ambugotten well <laughs> the only contextually do i know that that's what he said because from the gates of eden to the battle of ambugotten right. otherwise Context i wouldn't though. know what he was saying um but um so then in uh, the time of, of Idiot Flesh, the band that preceded Sneaky yes. Time with yes. some of the same people. Big uh, Idiot Flesh fan here, by the way. All right, all right. Going way back. Bring it back. Going way yeah. back. I, I was, I was uh, a little too young to attend some of the, a lot of the, the events, but uh, yeah. I, I knew and loved the band well. But we did puppet shows, you know, for uh, yes, the kids. Yes, yes. You know, so. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, and look and how one, I turned out. No. Bring the kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, um, so, so this, yeah, so the Ambugatan then for an Idiot Flesh we we had this giant sort of wheel of fortune wheel. Yeah, the wheel. Sure. And click, 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 click. Yeah. And we would put various things on the wheel depending on what the show was. Sometimes it would be like our set list, and the audience could spin the wheel, and that would where it would land. Oh, we play that song. Uh, but there was a New Year's Eve show where we said, well, we can have the audience can decide what year it's going to be. And so we had various, hmm. you know, hmm. famous years from history. Um, Certainly. And one of them was Ambugatan. And so it spelled, you know, spelled that way on there. And that wheel was then hanging on the wall of the rehearsal room, which even crossfaded to become the sleepy time Gorilla Museum rehearsal room during our initial year or so of just rehearsing and writing and playing no shows. Sure. And um, during that time, David Shamrock, our erstwhile drummer, uh, who had introduced this wonderful instrumental tune, um, at some point asked, guys, what is... What's Ambugaton? And we were like, <laughs> oh, oh, Ambugaton, right? And you know, told him the story. Yeah, and, like, yeah. and then he was like, well, I like, I like Ambugaton. I'm like, well, okay, yeah. Dave, you know, that's, that's, yeah. that's your right, you know. Tomato, that's, tomato, uh, some might right, say. Right, yes. right. <laughs> and, um, and then, and then he decided, well, well, that'll be the name of my, of this song that we've been, you know, working on like ah oh, okay right. great yeah no well we should just we should shout it out at some point in the song so yeah that's that's the roots of that thanks yeah. hank yeah yeah <laughs> good, old, good old hank uh oh carla in, in in the chat and i should say the the chat's very lively uh but i've got my own ah. questions and they oh. can they can start their own show but carla mentions uh, uh kumbaya oh. equals come by here that's right a lot of people do not know Look at all these. I didn't oh. just uh, realizing there's a, a whole other. Oh, oh, I see. Well, people are having their own show in the in the chat. It's it's uh, right. it's very it's very lively. But I, I like I like to keep things focused and not scamper around uh, whenever I can because it's yeah. a it's a uh, slippery slope, as they say. Uh, right. Um, certainly. Uh, so okay. So and and I do want to kind of revisit the. He visits some of the earlier stuff as well, uh, but I want I we we're talking about past, we're talking about future. It's, I think I I like the, what you've done with uh, the Kickstarter very well, and the fact that more it seems almost like more a pledge drive. I realize I'm coming from the world of public television, and uh, <laughs> you know between Doctor Who episodes they come on and uh, <laughs> you know give your five dollars and you'll get and you get your coffee mug or, or whatnot. Right, exactly. Uh, which, of course, one could make the argument that it would also be nice if we lived in a culture that just funded arts and uh, was 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 more. <laughs> yeah, we've been to Europe. Impossible. Oh wait, no. There's a, actually, it's not. It's pretty possible. An entire factory that has <laughs> yeah. now been transformed into like a like a punk rock squat slash venue. Like yeah, yeah. you know. 
Uh, so, funded, but I, but again, a funded uh, anarchist reading room. Yeah, you know, right, in right. Slovenia. Exactly. You know, I've been to a funded anarchist reading room yeah. in Slovenia. Which is which are, which are things that you can do. It's just we choose not to do that with our resources, and that is yeah. a much different conversation that we can certainly delve into another time. Yeah. Uh, but I think that the idea of crowdfunding was almost like hijacked uh, to a certain degree for a few years, and then also, unfortunately, when it tends to come up, it tends to be t for the purposes of, of funding people's medical bills, uh, mm. because we do not live in a society that also thinks that healthcare is a human right. So that's another fun. unfunded American thing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. My friend in, uh, in France is like, are Americans just like deathly afraid of like stepping on a nail or like falling into a chasm? Cause right. like you're absolutely screwed. If anything happens to you, it can really devastate you. It's very with, true. You know? Yeah. Uh, and, which is, uh, and I'm just not, I'm not trying to bring the party down just by but noting these things that we all know, but, uh, I like that, uh, when you think about the internet and what uh, folks have used the internet for predominantly, uh, and social media and, and things along those lines and circles of confirmation bias, et cetera, et cetera. The idea of, of the crowdfunding as like, again, almost a pledge drive. Uh, which allows you the ability of like, I want a John Cain Society membership card. Okay, well, you know, there, there, there's here's something you can do. You help fund these activities and you get that. And it's like you get this unique piece of art. Uh, you know, you get a situation where whatever your, uh, I think you've got limited edition pillowcases. There, there's all kinds of like, a, there, there's like a little like sleepy time, like Etsy store practically that, right. that, that's, that's in this Kickstarter. Like it's, and much like everything else with the band, it's incredibly dense with a lot of information <laughs> and a lot of like cool things to look at. Uh, and I, 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 it's so wide in, in scope and, and encompass, but ultimately for the same goal of the, of the furtherance of the art. Uh, did it come forth? Fully formed from the head of Zeus, or was that a was that a process <laughs> to put all oh, that? Oh, quite a process. We've probably been um, just sort of stewing on this whole project for about a year or so, maybe up until now, and then up until like the kind of what is now the public sort of blast of um, right saying saying what we are doing. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been a long kind of weird a uh, virtual world of like writing and um you know zoom meetings and such uh it's very surreal um in that uh we <laughs> we haven't even been into a in a room together yet um so wow, it's, uh, wow. it's a little like it's a little um dis <laughs> disembodied but um well yeah. that's part of the uh, that's part of the kickstarter exactly it's like <laughs> what can we do to room? like get her? Yeah, it's gonna take. A, we'll say, get us all together into a room. So. Yeah, it's gonna take a village to make this village. Right. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that when we actually all end up in the same room. That will be. Yeah. Yeah. That will be exciting. Well, and again, see, see the earlier discussion about you know these tools that are now available that were not certainly not available in the past, and uh, you know, it, yeah. incredibly useful that way. Uh, so yeah, and and the. I like for a band that trades in the mysterious and uh, you know the bleak and uh, ob ob not bleak oblique and fantastical <laughs> sometimes bleak I don't know sure uh, I like that there's a budget you know it's like look it costs this much to do these things we're trying to finish this record <laughs> yeah. we're trying to finish yeah, this no, film no. we're trying to get people in a room like if we're gonna be out right. on tour uh, you know like it's yeah. gonna require that's this. what we say we had, it sort of all. Once the ball got rolling, we sort of realized like it's all got to happen together. You know, the film, right? It's, it's going to make sense if the album and the film come out at the same time. And then, you know, what we have to go and do a live show because that's that's sure. our that's really our main our main thing. You know, I I think if we had to underscore just one of the elements of what we of what we have done over the course of our it was really you know hitting the road. We did a, so much touring back in the day right and um yeah it was really our sort of how how we got out there how how we made our our name for ourselves was by doing live shows like we we never had any hit singles and you know it was it was just about going and bringing that crazy show to one city after another for years <laughs> yeah grad very gradually like yeah this time there was like 
Last time there was 22 people in the room, and tonight there was 28 people. So <laughs> somebody know, brought some like, friends. Great, yeah. <laughs> so like, you know, and we just sort of started started that way, and just you know, just kept kept building it up by by word of mouth. Well, yeah, it's like so, touring as a war of attrition almost. Yeah, uh, which yeah, which so. certainly is, is a model that's not unfamiliar to not just me, but like yeah. a lot of people on this show. Right. Uh, I was speaking with Austin of the band Chatpile from from Oklahoma who said that uh, he related the tale that he saw, he saw you guys live before he ever had heard any of the recordings and was just like, you know, just blown away by the, the presentation, like the whole world and uh, that it had a profound effect on him. That, right uh, on. So yeah, the conser- probably at the conservatory, I'm guessing. More than like Oklahoma, likely, Oklahoma city. city. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, haven't not been to Oklahoma. Yeah. Haven't been there for, for quite a while now free salamander exhibit has not played oklahoma and it's been years since uh my band fawn fables has played fawn fables yeah Yeah. uh, we just just got back a few weeks ago from a national tour that did not include oklahoma unfortunately Mm. it did expand on the previous summer's uh tour but yeah oklahoma we need to and so i'm glad to hear that that chat pile is from there and they're They're ready to do stuff, and uh, yeah, we got we we we're due, overdue. You know, I I I know some guys that would love to make something happen in Oklahoma for sure. Yeah, and it's those guys I just talked about a minute ago. Right. So. right. <laughs> <laughs> but you could do a lot worse. They're a fantastic band, and um, yeah, they've 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 brought a lot of new faces into noisy music, which is not something that anyone should ever be mad at. Mm. Uh so. Oh, the bus? Does the bus yet live? It does. It's the Free Salamander Exhibit bus. Um, yes, um, it's uh, it needs new tires. Um, but other than that, I believe it's okay. Um, it has not <clears throat> taken any trips now since before COVID. Sure. So yeah. it's, it's due for a, a due for a close inspection before we commit it to a the cr- crisscrossing the nation but it is a it's a fantastic bus like uh sprightly yeah in yeah. terms of yeah what what you know in the the salamander tours that we did we just found it to be so very reliable and almost yeah. brand new compared to our yeah. previous buses which were our, our first was a Six. a, a s- early 70s city transit bus right that we that's the idiot that was an idiot flesh yeah. days and crossing over into the first first uh sleepy time tours and then we got an earlier a 1962 uh detroit diesel that we <clears throat> drove into the ground more or less and will now that will be housing uh visitors to the lost coast of humboldt county california because it's not going to make that trip again back over that crazy pass that it took to get it there right it was sort of a one way let it go for five bucks by the way you just gotta gotta pick it up talk about a kickstarter reward (laughs) the five dollar level the old bus come and get it please (laughs) bring your tow truck yeah yeah exactly and your road repair crew to fix the road to your petrolia your sense Uh, of adventure (laughs) yeah but uh yeah but this bus is i believe a 95 um and which makes it and and fairly low mileage yeah and it's automatic yeah this mci bus ac yeah man i just i just played uh on tour in humboldt last year i wish i would have known i could have we could have done an excursion and dropped by although we did see the redwoods and two of the people again had never seen redwoods so that was uh probably worthwhile i would say but also the bus would have been cool to see (laughs) truly would have been cool for me i would have yeah (laughs) people like this just it's a bus I was like, well, yeah. no, but it's a notable bus. <clears throat> well, I'll just mention again, if you got $5 burning a hole in your pocket, man, <laughs> um, come on down and just grab yourself a bus. You Hidden know? Kickstarter reward. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, so, so okay, so the idea also is that, uh, if I remember, <laughs> Carlos says they might be offering that tier soon. Okay, all right. Hey, I mean, it's, look, I'm not saying any credit for it. I'm just saying it's a great idea. Uh there's a there's stretch goals right because because the idea is that it, so at the time of this recording and understanding that um 
podcasts, like many things tend to be people consume them at their own rate at their own time. Something that is happening today is happening in the far past for some people, uh, so on and so on. But the baseline fundraising goal has been exceeded and there, and there are certain stretch goals. And I think the idea is, was there was going to be a, uh, take the museum on tour, right? Yeah, we have, um, we have the funding to, uh, finish the record, which we just did last night. And, right. uh, the film, that's a whole other world of people that we need to get, um, their fingers in, but yeah, we secured the funding for that. And then, um, just maddeningly close to the next goal, which is a, a U.S. tour. So um, that's um, within spitting distance, as they say. Which I can just say, and again, I don't throw up every comment that isn't Carla, apparently, on the screen. Uh, but I, there's a lot of people in the chat that are very excited about that possibility that are doing the thing people do where they name Look at Kalamazoo, Walla Walla, Washington. Yeah, right, yeah. Come, to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come to Brazil. Come to, I mean, sure, yeah. we'll be, we'll be yeah. right there. Yeah, sounds great. Uh, but again, it requires money. And, and, and I, again, I just had to hand it to you that like the, like the budget's right there, right? And, and including like tour prep, but like just like the idea of, of, of putting it like, I, I love that because I think that the, one of the problems with arts is that people think that it somehow devalues the art if you talk about the commerce. And I think that's a stigma somewhat from earlier generations that I find it encouraging that to have people talk about that. That'd be more encouraging if it wasn't so expensive, right? It wouldn't be if, you, if you, again, if there was maybe going back to the earlier thing about Europe of like, Oh yeah, the government could actually do this and they choose not to, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, if you are interested in Sleep Time Gorilla Museum, and one would assume if you're listening or watching this, you are, one would hope, uh, that it seems like it would be a reasonable thing to <clears throat> pledge some money at the, the SGM 2024 Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum Kickstarter, which again, is in the in the show notes. Uh, so how much of a stretch goal are, are, is, is this? Because at the time of of this recording, uh, it's doing all right. Like you're, you're moving swiftly towards like the next level. Like, you know, is there going to be a show on the moon? Like what's, uh, what, what you know, if, uh, <laughs> if the funding's there, sure. We'll play the moon. Yeah. Um, let's yeah. Let's... <laughs> uh, I, I mean, what did Michael Nils, what, what, what do you guys think about this whole like crowdfunding business? Like uh, it's inspiring. And I'm glad that we have people that, are doing that are helping us with it right because um maybe um just myself is not suited to such endeavors but i'm really glad that we have um an amazing uh, roster of humans that are just dedicated to this goal of getting us out there again um <clears throat> and really like it would have been impossible without without this team of folks that we that we assembled uh, yeah we have to mention meredith yayanos Mallory and Eric Carter, our booking, oh, Eric. booking guy. I mean, you might, you might have I, I know him. him also. Yeah, he, yeah. I just had Eugene from Oxbow on, actually. Uh, uh, so, all right. Yeah, he as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and it's not. It may not be an art, but it's a discipline, right? It's 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 a uh, it's it's art. It's an art, as far as I'm concerned, certainly an art I'm not not as familiar with, but uh, I it, I find it to be very. Uh, of its time, which is which is interesting because it seems as if the, the motifs of what make the band the band, uh, which again, I'd like to kind of go back in time a little bit shortly on this. You wouldn't think it would necessarily lend itself well to that sort of radical disclosure. <laughs> but I love it. I think I think it's I think it's it's very uh, future forward. It's it's very brave. And it also could, helps shine a light on just how expensive it is to 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 do anything. It's the story Frankly. of art in America. You yeah. Know, it needs to, you know, needs to be funded. Yeah. Well, we've always, I mean, as far as the, you know, I, the, the format of doing a, you know, internet based, you know, pledge drive essentially. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I would have been myself, you know, sort of intimidated to take up such a thing. Uh, I have very little, um, interaction with the internet myself i better I, I barely do emails the only thing i know how to do on computer is is uh recording 
programs, which I, I, one recording program is, is what I know. But and it's an absolutely invaluable tool. And I'm very grateful and will always be to, you know, the, the power, the powers of the uh, computing world for that. And I recognize it's a it's a really powerful tool and for so many things. Um, it just hasn't been one that I've I've jibed with very sure. well as as a media platform. Now, I know so much has moved to there in terms of how music is getting around but all all along way back to idiot flesh days we have been very much um community based and so our shows you know so often and not just in the bay area but in, in a lot of places would be sort of bursting at the seams with people getting involved and special guests and lectures. And, you know, we were always very sort of quick to try to incorporate performers or, you know, because, there, yeah, there's so many, if you, if you don't think of a, of a rock show as just, there's going to be music, you know, songs one through 10 and then it's over. But instead as a, just a, a format as a, as a, a venue for all kinds of all kinds of things could happen. And, you know, we've always found that the audience is really receptive to that, to having having that moment of like, oh, wait, this is the show. But is there something going on back over there? You know, just breaking the right. breaking right. the wall of like, here's the stage. The lights are on us. Da, da, da. And so anyway, that has always been so on the verge of expanding to include lots of folks. And so this this sort of having it be a community based fundraiser really makes sense um, for us, um, you know, as a, as tr trying to get the, the, the funding to get this thing up and running at a, at a time when, you know, there's right now, except, except what well, we did have some of those vinyl, vinyl records. We had the, the yep. second printing of the sleepy time, uh, you know, gatefold double vinyl uh, edition from uh, Blood Music, so we had we had that to sell. That was like the one thing that we had. Like, what do we have? <laughs> what do we have? Our what can we sell right now? Sell? It's not nailed down. Okay, Let's start this uh, <laughs> this fundraising effort. Um, yeah. Well, so. yeah, and 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 I think you know it's while people ha have fantastic and or mundane uh, vision boarding towards things like you know like a modern day like House of Medici or something. The, the nice thing about the uh, about these tools is that it allows you not only directly connect with your fans, but it allows you to, to receive in kind support for the art that you have enriched their lives with. And that is a, you know, gosh, what a wonderful exchange that is yeah. just to, to take out, honestly, take out the middle of it. Oh, I still, you still got to pay taxes on it and all that. Sure. So it's not totally taking out the middle man, but you know what I mean when I say that. And, uh, for me, the the idea of crowdfunding when it first came about was sort of like, that's what I immediately went to because of course I went to you know this <laughs> vaguely utopian ideal <laughs> situation and it's like oh no it's it's mostly not that it's mostly nonsense uh, as is you know, many things in life uh, but I I found it to be very enheartening to see to see it grow and to see people engage with just the excitement of even the possibility of Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum existing as a physical presence again it's a, it's a, it's a thrilling frankly yeah we're incredibly grateful for what's going on right now and very excited to to rekindle the stuff as it were yeah yeah exactly reconvene i think is, is what we uh <laughs> we, we said i on. prefer rekindle but that's you know, such a rock rekindle. and roll word you know <laughs> yeah yeah it really yeah. is <laughs> bust out the spreadsheet take a yeah, look exactly We'll uh, synergize our solutions and then we'll uh, circle back around to, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> precisely. Uh, so I wonder, uh, one, and I, I, we should say too, I think, uh, so again, uh, not knowing when, if, if people, the, we have plenty of people engaging with the show live, but uh, people, <laughs> but a thousandfold listen to it later on their own time. Uh, I think the fifth is is my understanding of when uh, there's going to be some record pre-orders is is, is mm. my understanding, right? Is that is that seem remotely yeah. true for you guys? I don't have it in front of me. Something so. like that. I, the um, the date isn't really set, but um, yeah, yeah, there's going to be some pre-order possibilities coming um, 
Right, which in, is just next week. That's next yeah, uh-huh. yeah. from the time from the time <laughs> of us doing like, this, it's literally next week. September. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Good. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's almost September, right? Is it like yeah. September starts it's tomorrow? Any minute now. Yeah, yeah I mean, September will be in a couple it, hours, depending yeah. on somewhere <laughs> it is already <laughs> September, I think. Exactly. Yeah, yes, I it is. That's, that's true. true. Yeah. That's true. Uh which is which is exciting because again, uh there's there's certain kinds of people, and especially for a band like yourself, that's going to enthrall people that are down for the nuance that that want all the, they want all of the you know broke overtones and adornments and and, and stories and et cetera et cetera. And some people just want to listen to the record. <laughs> it's like I just want to hear the music. I don't. I don't. I'm not. That's not. That's not my deal. Just like when people talk about, it's always guys who say this too. I'm not a lyrics guy. <laughs> like, okay you're not a lyrics guy okay i won't take it to karaoke then i don't know what that means i'm not a lyrics guy yeah. <laughs> but, uh but it's i, I love that uh that, that you have both speeds for this and <laughs> it's almost like a perfect use case like if kickstarter did not know that the sleepy time gorilla museum fundraiser was going to happen they would have had to invent it <laughs> it's how I look at it. You know what I mean? Like it's perfect for y'all. Um, like the only other band I can think of, the, like the residents would, mm. would be would be the only one I could think of that would have like the same level of just like lore and mythos and uh, and and again depth behind the uh, behind the facade. Uh, I wonder though if you wouldn't mind talking about. So we we mentioned Idiot Flesh uh, some. How did it all get started? Because I feel like it, even though I was there, this happened in the days of, of every movement and uh, not being like public and uh, you couldn't heart it or like it or comment on it, et cetera, et cetera. And just uh, there was for my purposes, I just saw Idiot Flesh was gone and Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum was a thing. And I remember being like, that's an interesting sounding band name. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> and again, a couple times distinctly remember hearing donkey headed adversary for the first time and being like, this is nuts. I'm into it. Uh, so let's go all the way back to, to the, to the beginnings, to the, to the, the big bang of sleepy time gorilla museum. And tell me, tell me about those early days. If you, if you would. Well, I, I think, yeah, for, you would have to go back to idiot flesh because there was a pretty yeah. direct continuity in terms of the, um, sort of the presentational approach. Uh, if anything, uh, Idiot Flesh was more uh, more regularly theatrical, uh, at least uh, Idiot Flesh often had a puppet show yeah. or some s- weird sort of skit-like element or so that had, um, and that was just n- sort of naturally grew out of the personnel that, that were part of Idiot Flesh. So Gene Jun, wrote wrote plays you know he was he he thought as a writer very much so and then yeah we had yeah we just had some some uh folks that were really game for and interested in kind of sort of blowing blowing the the fourth wall down and doing doing all kinds of you know unexpected things Right. As we were, as as that band was looking at its kind of exploding. Um, Charming the, Hostess was uh, kind of around. Charming the Hostess time, was right? going yeah. on. At, yeah. At the same time. So we were working with Carla already at that mm-hmm. point. And, um, you know, we're getting a although Carla, for the most part, didn't play violin in Charming Hostess. Right. She sang, but we knew she played violin and we knew she played really well. Um, and the, the idea of doing a, you know, doing a rock, a more rock based band with Carla was like, oh, yeah. And actually I remember the very first, um, meeting with Carla, I think the first time we met was, um, backstage at, in San Francisco at, the, at, the, at a club where we were playing with, I think it was with the mud women um mud women wow yeah Yeah. oh wow carla was sitting in with mud women yeah um and she was friends with them and el fay who later who was in that group and and later toured with us as our sound person and anyway she was there and backstage she was like you know warming up you know with her her violin and 
and it, you know it sounded like some cool you know bar talk riffs you know dun, yeah, dun, yeah. Dun, dun, some some great sort of jaunty hungarian dissonance you know and i was like whoa okay mud women really have that going on tonight and yeah. i just started chatting with her and our you know mutual fandom of bar talk and other related things and you know just i think we might have even had some exchange like hey well sometime we should do some kind of you know rock thing. thing together yeah. Yeah. yeah so that was the earliest inclination and then not too long after that she was in charming hostess and so um yeah so as uh yeah and then there was um at the around the same time david shamrock who we had known from years earlier sort of pre-idiot flesh we had played with him he was a great drummer uh and he was you know had said you know guys I'm, I'm, I'm getting back into playing the drums i'd be interested in playing in a project if you know of anything going on and it was just sort of like well yeah we should yeah we should have a group with david and carla and then around that same time we saw mo Stiano, Stiano. yeah yeah like, yeah just destroy a stage you know by himself somewhere what a what a, what a maniac i mean there, like a television with a yeah. sledgehammer or something and like wearing it on his head and yeah and you know but but his like a uh, single stroke I can't call it a roll, really, but a single stroke, like blur, of <laughs> yeah, yeah, second yeah. notes with with metal drumsticks on a metal, you know, pan. I was like, wow, okay, that guy. We, you know, I don't know if I don't know if he is tameable, but it's worth a shot. You know, we should like. He, we he's he's a. I characterize him as a what is happening sort of player. Where you're like, yeah, what is uh, happening? Like, what's what's right. what's he doing? <laughs> That's crazy. He's one of the few performers that I've seen do pure improv at, that is just absolutely riveting yeah. from beginning to end because his yes. physical energy was just always right there. There was never a moment of like, hmm, now it's getting into a little lull while he's trying to think of what to do next. <laughs> right. you know? Which, you know, <laughs> sure. for better yeah, or worse, yeah, yeah, like yeah. most improvisation-based shows have, have a certain element of that. And they stretch it out. They're, they're, yeah, they have their <laughs> moments of brilliance, and yeah, but Mo was just like on fire from beginning to end, and I was like, wow. full tilt, yeah. full tilt, Mo. So. And I, I'll just like interject um, that I played in Vacuum Treehead. Vacuum Treehead, Mo. that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh my so, god. Yeah. So, so, oh, the <laughs> weird ass like connections um, go way back, you know. Um, yeah, in the, in the late '90s, I played with Mo for few years in back yeah years. man yeah. oh man that's that's yeah. uh we're just we're ringing all the bells of bringing down the house like in westo at lexa walsh's place man oh, yeah you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah oh wow yeah gosh yeah. uh all right so 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 all that's that's around um what well, i'm glad you mentioned nils because when i characterized sleepy time gorilla museum i was like oh <laughs> What I said at the time, you have to understand context. It was like, oh, it's like if it, the idiot flesh guys started like a kind of more straightforward rock band. Not that it was a straightforward <laughs> rock band, to be clear. Right. But in comparison to what idiot flesh was doing. Right. 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 It was it was much more just purely music based. Right. It was it was um, less of a uh, <laughs> yeah traveling circus. Right. Uh, peace right. and love. Peace and love. Yep. Uh, that then then right. So so again, not a straightforward rock band. To be clear, I don't want to be mischaracterized uh, by, by saying yeah. that. Uh, what what comes first compositionally for what ended up on uh, grand opening and closing? Because I mean, I think of like uh, "Sleep Is Wrong" uh, as, as being like you know one of like the quintessential sleepy time songs, and it's you know out of the gate, out of the gate, quoting Dylan Thomas. You know, <laughs> it's it's like, it's like right there, it's like right, right, yeah. statement of intent. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that record, uh, you know, like like all of our records, it, it was it was a sort of compositional collaboration where, you know, David would bring in David would bring in very finished pieces as he right. always has and still is doing with Free Salamander Exhibit. He brings in uh, except for vocals. He doesn't really write vocals. So it, it creates this like, all right. But he writes these intricate little jewel boxes of rock music you know which yeah. are so so fun to like wrangle and um the uh but one of the things that sort of brought us together as sleepy time and in our early sort of conversations about what we might do 
was that we were all all very much um, sort of players with a with a strong background in sort of vertical and horizontal planned music, you know, and um, sure. where, okay, and these lines fit together, you know, various levels of musical compositional training floating around in the group. Um, but we were all, you know, so taken with a lot of this music that was happening throughout the 90s and which had was completely different was absolutely based on sonics first um you know just the sound of 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 homemade instruments all the stuff that happened in industrial music and i mean mm -hmm. the sort of real industrial music not the sort of metal disco <laughs> but, it's an important <laughs> caveat yes absolutely yeah no it's true i mean I, it's sort of a lot of you know people of a, of a younger generation sort of think of of uh industrial as this yeah anyway but yeah, so stuff where people were inventing their instruments and wallowing in texture and sound and at the expense of composition, sometimes, you know, it's like, wow, there's really, you know, not so much happened on that album, but man, it sounds great, you know? <laughs> and right. so, but when we were all admirers, you know, to varying degrees of this, this kind of music. So it was like, okay, we're bringing these skills, but we want to learn more. We want to dig deeper into into patience and sonics because idiot flesh yeah. for all of our uh, to get all that stuff to happen within one show all of the songs were you know moved very quickly from one thing to the next and then we'd cut to the puppet show and boom it was just like this rapid right. fire there was no the very little room for ambience and patience and so that was one of the elements that that we agreed that we that we needed to work on in sleepy time and maybe we could help each other to achieve our goals so that was so there's there's that element and a number of those songs that just have these have this element of spaciousness where some of the homemade instruments are creaking and croaking along and that that has stayed stayed right with us and we uh sure the, the yeah. new album has the new album has i've you know in in the in the endless uh going over it as we've been working on it i've really been enjoying all the non-music moments all the sonic moments and we've really let some of them yeah you know take blossom and it's uh yeah it's a lot a lot of fun um yeah, Carla's dropping some bon mots in the in the chat here oh, yeah. saying that thor rings some bells uh, all Harris, right yes with um mm -hmm. Uh, which I'm surprised I've never had him on the show. Actually, now that I think about it, uh, yeah, friend of a friend, uh, uh, delightful but, fellow. Yes. Deli yeah, yeah, yeah. So the yeah, like so the, the more like the more like uh, like the, the not the uh, not having to worry about the cabaret or Ed Sullivan show as, as aspect of of the show, and just concentrate on like, like the compositions and, and the presentation and the music itself. Um, yeah. Not that you characterize either as either of those things. I'm just saying that like again, it's the idiot <laughs> flesh guys have a rock band. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you gotta love the reductiveness of like a 17 year old music fan, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's uh so okay, so then that's got uh so so that and that's got just a place in time that's released at like 2001, mm -hmm. 2001 right around that first record, record, yeah, 2001. And there's some um, you know, yeah, there, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, I, I, I feel it's disingenuous to call them Baroque instruments, but, uh, you know, like, you know, there's all the Mo stuff, like whatever <laughs> I'll stuff the Mo's up to, like food containers or whatever, whatever he's uh, right. going. Uh, auto harp. There's like pump organ. Yeah, we had three <laughs> auto harps. We had a piece. <laughs> we, we, not just one, but thing. three okay. mic'd, you know, three that. like contact mic'd auto harps. For yeah. a tune that, that David had had written with these, you know, fields of of pitches, sure. and and yeah, so three auto harps and then Tibetan bells, you know, and that you know is the piece I think that closes the album and the original version of the album. But when we were first opening our shows with it, people wouldn't know that the show had started and it had been going <laughs> for ten minutes because in order to play those instruments, we had to be seated you right know, on on the ground like with our heads a few inches away from the strings to uh, auto harps are not made to like pluck out individual yeah. strings, much no. less, you know, like atonal chord clusters. So it was very, you know, concentration heavy, not very visual. In fact, we were, you know, unless the stage was very high, 
we were essentially not I, visible at all. So it was hunched very, over and, yeah. very <laughs> quiet because it's out of ours. So there's a moment on the live album where you can hear um, uh, in, in, in the, you know, because it was recorded the, from the audience. There's somebody uh -huh. in the audience with the mic recording it. And you can hear uh, Mick Runnelson, also known as Darling Freakhead, saying to somebody, hey, this is it, man. This is what you paid your money for. <laughs> so like, what do you think of that, bro? <laughs> All right. And, awesome. uh, because at that point, the audience, it's like mostly what well, you hear and very only right, gradually right. do you start to hear the auto harps, but mostly you just hear the entire room full of people talking. It's yeah. like, rah, 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 the rah, diegetic rah, rah, conversation rah, of being rah, at a rah, show. Rah, rah, yeah. Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> this is it, man. This is what you paid. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> some yeah. some things it's like, yeah, you couldn't write that line, you know? Yeah. Like it, 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 it wouldn't come off the same. That that's lovely. Yeah. Well, it's uh, very reliable for right right <laughs> exactly well and yeah you know you got a uh there's uh and there was a few things that um speaking of live there was a guy that uh, the end records re-release has that uh version of powerless from the great american musical i think uh, or something yeah. that's on that right right um because yeah let's just let's throw in a, let's throw in a nine minute song at the end of the yeah <laughs> <laughs> why not why not yeah. uh but I, it always occurred to me like sunflower was a really cool way to end that record uh mm. it, it, just again as, as this one being like a statement of intent too right of, of just like well what is this there's there's these words that are bunched together like any band what do those words mean well those words sound like this mm -hmm. and uh yeah definitely definitely made an impact for sure so I saw the times I saw you a lot were mostly during the period between that and of natural history. Like, I feel like there was a lot of, um, a, a lot of great shows. And again, like a band that people would remember, you know, that was, was like notable, like, like, okay, this is, and not that other, the other bands aren't like, I enjoyed all the fun Fable shows I've seen. I've enjoyed a uh, salamander exhibit, but like, I feel like, when the run up to of natural history was like a very interesting time, just in general in music uh, and the fact that what sleepy time was doing was so outside of what anybody was, was thinking of in the zeitgeist, mm -hmm. but bringing elements of it that were interesting in new ways. Uh, I'm thinking of like, on, um, like bring back the apocalypse, right? Uh, like, like take, taking like, <laughs> dancey aspects of things or gun day's child right where where you have like um i feel like there's a lot of danciness that were, was happening in the zeitgeist but it was a very specific kind of way and it certainly didn't have uh the sort of progressive rock overtones of, of something uh like the freedom club or something along those lines uh, in context and it seems like at that point that was when it was like oh they've built a world They've built a world around themselves where they're just going to take, again, uh, and I share the same criticism of what industrial music has come to mean uh, as well, where, where you're taking all that stuff and kind of burying them down to the, the, the baseline ingredients and making something entirely different as a meal. Uh, so that's my take on that record. Uh, can you tell me about the record uh, from the inside from Natural History? Hmm. Well, that's we get we get michael involved that's a and part way through that record i was trying right? to get him involved in the yeah, conversation I, I, too. I, yeah <laughs> <laughs> how you doing um, michael yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no, no i came into the band um right at like there were just boxes of that record like oh. filling the bus right at, right mm. uh, or the nursery where we um we all lived um mm, okay okay do you not play a little something on there I not yet, no, not no, until no, the okay. reissue where okay. I just do like a, a running DVD style commentary oh. over every song. <laughs> and I was like, okay, what Nils is doing here is actually pretty interesting. He's tuning his guitar down ever so slightly. It's he's, he's, he's using the 12 string here. Okay. Oh no, in this moment, and you won't be able to really hear the music at all. It'll just be me uh, yeah. just 
Does talk that exist? For like an hour over it. Yeah. That would, that would, that would, that does that exist? That'd be fantastic. <laughs> it's, it's like when Spinal Tap, when they, I mean, they did it, a commentary track and like it's like another movie of them like doing it in character, basically. Exactly. Yeah. It's you like know? a stretch goal. Um, it's a medal of the Michael, like, Michael's <laughs> commentary. Look, that's, uh, I'm in. Like, whatever. I mean, within reason, they'll make like a thousand dollars and I can't do that. But, uh, exactly. uh, yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, again, that so that record, uh, I, I feel like that, that record there was there was a lot of there was expectations to a certain degree uh, amongst a certain type of rock nerd <laughs> of what maybe like it might sound like, and it 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 wasn't a completely left field necessarily, but it definitely was. It, it went to some different heights and some different areas that uh, were unexpected at the time. That again. We're, we're not uh, trend chasing. <laughs> Do you understand yeah. what I mean when I say that? Because yeah, well, you know, it's like I I have to say like that uh, whether we were sort of in with trend uh, trends or not, I think we were so um, just sort of involved in our own process, right? And touring. So, but other than seeing bands that we played with on tour. I didn't at that point, I don't remember really being exposed to much music that was going on in the greater world beyond people that we would see on tour and our immediate community. So I, I wouldn't really, really even know whether it was within a ongoing trend or not. You know, once we sort of got right. started, we were just sort of in our, in our own little thing. And, and, you know, clearly we, there's, we like a lot of different musics and are trying to incorporate the things that we like from many different kinds of things. So, and, you know, had no qualms about including very noisy or very quiet or, you know, everything in between. And then that record has a real, um, it, that one is, is threaded through where it almost, it, 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 it moves from one thing into the next with yes. ambient things and yeah. things recorded by, uh, you know, actually really was into sort of natural history records or, mm -hmm. or you know, nature sound re right. recordings. Um, and, um, and we were touring all the time leading up to that. We're doing a lot of touring, which meant a lot of time out on the open road and the wilds of america and you know if you've, you've crisscrossed america you know that there are spots where it's all dense with cities but living in the west you have to go through lots and lots of terrain that is still in spite of everyone's best efforts vastly unpopulated and completely wild wild and, yes. and so you know becoming really sort of getting tuned in to to, to keep to keep uh to keep eyes on the road, to keep sort of keep a keep alert and awake traveling around through these vast spaces was really interested in in, you know, the different types of cottonwoods that are growing from the eastern to the western right. part of the, you know, Nevada crossing and, you know, and, and what is going on with the geology of this, you know, so natural history interests it was sort of became a, uh, a real a real element at that point. And then we had the um, the Olivia Oyama, our sound our sound person at the time, was really handy with the invisible um, sort of spy microphone. Right, and right. So to get those recordings, would, like sure. crazy yeah. people would come onto the bus and just yeah. sit down and start telling us their you know their plans for the day or whatnot. And she would just sit down next to him with headphones on. And just be like close miking them. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, and getting, you know, Hollywood quality yeah, <laughs> recordings. Yeah, like secret <laughs> agent. Uh, at one point, her um her like stereo microphone were just like headphones. It was like right. that was the mm, actual. Mm. So she just looked like she was just like off enjoying a record or something. Sure, but actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, clandestinely <laughs> capturing the stuff. She was doing yeah. an art instead. So. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, and that's well. And again, there's very much a built world uh, with the band, and I feel like that's when that really started to show. Not just as a, uh, not that something that like feels 
kind of like a concept album, like some of the element of like futurism. I know that was the first time I'd really heard that depicted musically. And I thought that was pretty. Oh, and our friend Teddy Kaczynski, of course, you know, yeah. your friend and <laughs> mine, friend of the show. <laughs> uh but like the idea of uh, you know taking like all these aspects of the different of these different things like you know like uh, the things i would attribute to when i say prog progressive music um like you know like king crimson's more uh wild and heavy aspects and uh being akin to that but also western music and folk music and like having these other things that are that are just like the grand traditions of the land musically all kind of put into the blender uh so to speak and i think that that's something that's described often to the bay area because there are certain bands that uh the bay area itself is a melting pot right it, it, and it's one of the most accepting places that it doesn't matter where you came from you're here now and uh and i say that as someone who left because i got priced out but uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah 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 seriously folks uh but the idea and i did not realize until i left how different that that it is in other places where it's like oh no if you haven't been here not just your entire life but your family and your their ancestors and whatever then you're still an outsider mm. um, and i think the idea of sort of the genre blend which when people think of this they often ascribe to some pretty regrettable trends, uh, usually in the early 90s. Uh, but I think that there's it's a rich home. It's a rich home for that and for uh, yeah. for being a test kitchen almost. Yeah, Ab absolutely. Yeah. And I would put Sleepy Time at the vanguard of that uh, for sure, because I think that what you guys did were. Is just a. A magpieing almost of like certain things that you like and then again context is everything right we've established uh, nuance and are, is great and context is everything put something contextually next to another thing it becomes something new entirely yeah yeah they definitely like you know my early earliest days of being able old enough to be able to go into clubs and see shows definitely the you know one of the things going on was the the sort of thrash funk thing of just like hey yeah well, we could take you know rock guitars and i'm like yeah. funky bass and like you know and uh you know for what it for what it's worth you know it was a really just uh you know it sort of kicked kicked the doors down of of a couple a couple of genres you know and and i'm sure that was you know in our you know early early days of you know uh that that sort of em embracing this uh sort of eccentric you know whatever you want to do a band doesn't have to be one kind of of thing so at least, yes at least that as an imprint was was just right there from the from the get-go like then, the idea uh, of there being a rule set or something you had to follow which is yeah. just like no come on right. yeah in fact for a while that was like the main thing going around the the, the bay area was like these blended musical <clears throat> It's yeah. almost like you would get goofed on if you sounded like another band, right? Where it's, right. it's like, why right. would they huh? sound like that, huh? Why? They came out and they just played like hard rock the whole set. Like, <laughs> like, like, That's it? Know. That's <laughs> all they did? <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and again, I, I'm, and I'm not saying that just uh, being a genre blender is the only way to go, but I think I think that that is, um, there was such a unified voice of what you were doing at the time. Again, road hardened, right? And, and, and um really having an identity to the band and uh, this whole built world around it, that it, it comes across, it came across as quite powerful and, and it almost didn't matter who you were playing with. Cause it seems like a lot of times when you played with bands, it's like, Oh, we're playing with bands we like. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> Cause it's like, yeah. what are you going to do? Try to find bands that sound like you. Good luck. Right. You know? Oh yeah. No, I, <laughs> I, I love, you know, bringing in, you know, the Edmund Wells quartet four bass clarinets yes you know into yeah. a pair of microphones acoustic you know just but rocking so hard you know that um uh, yeah i mean like the metal show format can get like a little tiresome like you know you yeah. gotta love them but you know you're just like okay there's five bands all right we, we get it we get it see uh, <laughs> you know, strap slave. in yeah yeah, here's 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 the blast beats and like here's the guy who's playing like a thousand notes per second. Okay, I get it. Yep, I understand. Yeah. And, and that so, can be great. That can be wonderful. Right. It is great. It is great. But you know, where are the clarinet quartets? Right. Where's right. the auto harps? Right. Right. <laughs> you know, if they if they threw an auto harp, if I saw if I saw a metal band, like like there was like a five 
iPad metal bill and somebody busted loose auto harps, I'd be like, all right, I'm interested. Now. Well, uh, you're not too <laughs> botanist. Um, ah, it's right, not yeah. too far away from that. They're dulcimer, dulcimer metal. Are they really? I, yeah. I'm, I'm not familiar. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. B- big hammer dulcimers. Yeah. And a drum kit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm down. I'm, no I'm, guitars. <laughs> no guitars. In fact, yeah, when I last saw them, they were, they were, they had a, they were, they were working on a bass dulcimer okay. to replace the electric wow. bass that they had. Yeah. So then it would wow. be just all dulcimers and a drum set. Yeah. yeah. You got to yeah, admire so, the ethos. Yeah. yeah. And it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like blasting black metal. It's like, <laughs> you know, the vibrating <laughs> shimmering yeah, chords, you know, it just makes sense. It's like, all oh, right, right. That's actually a great instrument to do. You have that like yeah. resonance, right? Yeah. So it's, a, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Hey, shimmering all right. harmony. Yeah. Learning all kinds of new stuff on this show. Uh, so, okay. So tell me about that 2004, 2007, uh, you, you go up to uh, Inglorious Times, right? Tell me about that. Um, there's the help, uh, Helpless Corpses enactment, right? Um, that's the one that's got the, the video. There's uh, a video. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, Where's the band at around that time? What are you thinking? I mean, there's some James Joyce, obviously, uh, <laughs> on the mind. Right, right. Um, yeah, which is what that that song, you know, come comes out of out of Finnegan's Wake. But um, yeah, the the video actually, interestingly, was going to be uh, was going to be for the opening the song, the Companions. All the desperate people in this town are coming out tonight. They'll be here soon. You know. That song was sort of made a, a would make a natural video in a way. It, it tells a little story of, you know, uh, the, a very paranoid story of starting the show and then and then shutting the show down as during the course of the song. And we've got to lock the doors and these people are coming and turn. Let's get the lights lower. It's all just sort of in the lyrics of the song. And so I, I was imagined like, oh, yes, I could I could sort of imagine what a video might be like, you know, for this song. And I'd been having long conversations with Adam, uh, the video maker um, about, about this song and he had it all mapped out. And then, and then the the label who was going to help sort of promote it and all that sort of the the idea that it was like, well, it's a 10 minute song, you know, it's like, (laughs) well, no, that's not going to work. You know, it sort of was kind of a last minute switch. Like, yeah. Huh. Right. Okay. Ten minutes. That doesn't work, huh? No, it has to be within four and a half or whatever it was. Yeah. You know? Which we ended up um, even like kind of digestifying at the helpless corpses and X-Men song yeah. to like to kind of crush it into this video sort yeah. of format. It's a know? shortened, a shortened form <laughs> that but that works. And yeah, I, I try as I might, I could not make a version of of the companions squished down to four and a half minutes. So, uh, and the song was so was was yeah it was brand new we were just working on it and i sent like a rough of the song to the uh to adam and and he just jumped right on it and was like great i want to do i want to do that one you know um he was not somebody who had ever really listened to metal and he was like i'm intrigued you know let's let's do something with this metal song but make a very un metal video you know it's like great right because yes. right. because it's based on this you know finnegan's wake it is like part of the the what got that song going for me was you know just just reading finnegan's wake and the craziness of that i, I took i read it for about two years and uh, i remember i was on bart uh you know reading it and this one particular section just leapt out at me as being like as like scanning in in this little I was feeling the sort of the meter of it. And I was just starting to think, Oh, wouldn't that be funny if this was like delivered in this kind of metal voice? I started scanning it out and making little marks on it and like, okay. And uh, yeah, it just, it just sort of poured out as a, um, yeah, it was, so it was, there was a, a a comedic like juxtaposition of. of You wouldn't think that you wouldn't think it would be there. Right. Right. Just, just like I could not, as someone who rode Bart quite a bit back in the day, uh, the idea of reading Finnegan's Wait on Bart is, uh, <laughs> yeah, but you know, what are you gonna do? You know, you, you can just stay on the train all day, <laughs> that's you, know? you don't have to get yeah. off, <laughs> yeah. you don't have to actually go anywhere, right? Yeah. Precisely, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's important. <laughs> East Bay, West uh, Bay, East Bay. Like, I mean, like, I, 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 you know, a lot of times, especially during like peak hours, I'd be like trying to read an article in the Guardian or something, and then it would be, I feel like I got like a sentence through before I'm interrupted by somebody's nonsense. Anyway, uh, but so okay, so then there's and of course, uh, and for the people that are not knowledgeable of such things, yeah. Long songs difficult for videos. Like it's just there. It's just harder to do. There's more cuts. There's more action that's required. It's um, it's just generally a more difficult thing to do. And no, but I like it because I think that's a great. That's a very cinematic song. Not that the. I mean, you guys have a lot of cinematic songs, but I think that, that was a good example. And also, like, I feel like now video with the ubiquity of YouTube, video has become a more common thing again. But I feel mm. like there wasn't a lot mm. during that time. For me, yeah. for my sensibilities, for for my uh, for bands that I was interested in, and therefore it was another way that Sleep at Time Grill Museum differentiated itself as being a little bit different. Again, and again, the idea of there being this um, these different visuals that are that are associated with it that uh, is just another way to engage with the music and to recontextualize the art. It, it, it struck me as a on brand. <laughs> thing yeah. to do <laughs> right. yeah. yeah there's nothing there's nothing tough or violent in the video at all it's right. all victorian finery and the the ocean and yeah the redwoods and uh yeah there's a food fight though. there that's it's, the most violent that's the most violent thing, thing that's happening right exactly <laughs> yeah it's, it's you michael yes. the most violent thing in it you in the food fight and matthias yes uh -huh. they're fighting right. the over a loaf of bread Right, right. right. Um, Maniacs. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah. First of all, how dare you? Secondly, yeah. Um, well, the, and the, uh, yeah, well, there, and Michael, there's a lot of, um, uh, interesting instruments on there. What's, what's, what the, was it? Uh, Tangularium? Tangularium is just a, um, a fancy word for my effects board. Uh, through okay. which all the, um, <laughs> and sure. so named because, um, uh, um, there's a cable for each of the, uh, of these instruments that goes into this like nerve center that is the tangularium. And as you could imagine, um, the chord spaghetti nightly um, unfurling it, um, you know, it takes some doing. Uh, I've got, um, you know, part of it is right behind me right now. Like we've got the bike wheel right here. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yes. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Yeah, just that. Uh, all of my gear is um, not in the studio pretty much. Just uh, brought it home to record the new record um right here so yeah um the yeah so it's basically and um wow has it gotten better over the years um uh just not to like bore you with the um don't the think it's boring at all I think it's but uh, yeah just like there's some more compression gate kind of stuff going on individually for all the springs and the bike wheel um probably gonna have to figure out a toy piano situation for um for tours coming up um yeah because there's some prominent to toy piano and there, it's got to it be is. the right kind of toy yeah piano, um i right? play toy piano on ted and it would just yeah. be a, it would be a shame uh what we call ted is the uh that's the song the freedom club of course affectionately yeah. known as ted um, yeah, aka ted <laughs> yeah aka ted um but yeah um so yeah, uh, yeah, the tangularium, it's just an effects board. Don't don't be fooled, man. Uh, How about the electric pancreas? I forgot about that one. Ah, uh, it's right <laughs> right behind me. Right behind me. Uh, yeah, you want to demonstrate the electric Oh, we're gonna get we're gonna get electric pancreas uh, okay, recital. Here we go. Here. Okay, all right. So I, I I'm gonna have to describe this, this to the uh Yeah, this makes great radio. Listeners. Yeah, if you're listening on audio really great radio. Uh, Michael is holding up a strange kid. thing. It looks uh, like it's a, a saw ding. blade. That's been okay. sawed in half, um, and then uh, the the two halves uh, sort of um, joined together on top of one one another, and it sounds right. like that. Um, yeah. Only it has a contact mic, and it can go through. Uh, well, it, it goes through its own rat pedal, of course. Um, so it comes out more distorted and, and grindy. Yeah, it's yeah. just like a preamp kind of thing. Um, sure, what we use the rat pedals for, just to kind of like liven it up and those uh, are great They're, those are fantastic pedals yeah, like for the, for the oh, yeah exact and then idea. on the other side there's a spring um fantastic. you're not going to get much sound out of that no it, it's again this is I mean, this is some of it's 
Sorry, folks. It's some of us for the YouTube crowd. And, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's all we can say uh, about that. So that's the electric pancreas, everybody. So electric pancreas. Uh, right. Is that the one that has the sledgehammer dulcimer? The da- uh, <laughs> right. The right. sledgehammer dulcimer is an instrument that Dan made, um, right. which is, a, yeah. is is his kind of al- alternate bass, and it is um, sort of sort of following through on the longtime dream of wouldn't it be great if you know, when you when you have access to a piano harp, you uh-huh. know, and the 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 just a, a piano without the keys attached. And if you ever had as as we had and even brought it with us from the co-op we were living in in college, we brought the the, the piano frame with all the strings and we would just, you know, the 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 jam sessions with butter knives and you know yeah, 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 and yeah, always you'd get down to the very bottom strings and it's like that's where the real action was you know so at a certain point dan was like mm, yes we're not going to bring this piano harp on the road because it takes four people to lift it you know but <laughs> it needs its uh, own vehicle yeah how electric. about you know uh how about well you know he he made this thing with six of the lowest piano strings on it and yeah. and with a um so that it um, and then laid laid flat so that uh, usually striking it rather than plucking it Although you can pluck it. But he has like little different little hammers to hit it with of different hardness and it uh, is fretless. So and with with lots of little clamps, C clamps that can C-clamps. come down and like capo right. it to the six strings for each tune it has a different tuning or, or a different setup of the clamps. And um, and also the pickup itself uh, sl- can slide along a, a range of so because those low strings are so the overtones are so lively. Of course, yeah. You know, the upper partials, yeah. and so as you slide the pickup along, you're hearing all these different partials. So that part of the sound and yeah, and powerless and some of the songs you hear this. It's a, a natural uh, sort of flanger or phaser, but um, yeah, a manual, <laughs> a manual phaser. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's just showing this the outright primitiveness of our. But you yeah. can see, oh yeah, you, you know they have pedals that do that now. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> the electric pancreas is a very primitive instrument, and right, right. Um, what, actually, the the sledgehammer dulcimer is is a much is a very finished instrument. It's sure it's not uh, it's not so. Not so primitive, but um, yeah, you know, teaches uh, on Michael himself is a very primitive person. You, yeah. know, you can mm-hmm. tell by, um, you know, the the misunderstandings. Yeah, yeah. So he requires instruments that well, it's tactile. Reflect <laughs> his. Yeah, I, I think of uh, the Exploratorium, right? Where right. it's like it's like a museum, but it's hands on. Like you can right. Get on a bike and make this light bulb light up, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> like right. If you feel so inclined, like yeah. that's, that's uh, I, I I've, I've never I, I've been I've been by there one time. It actually wasn't go to the Exploratorium, but for like a, a separate music and art piece that was at there at the new location. Mm. I still think of it mm. in my head as being over by the Presidio still. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know. I can't think of where the new one is, but I went. With yeah, it's kindergartners. I, it was awesome. I was I'm sure. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah, I, I think I think it's, and for me, yeah. I think it's it was, it was I think it was it was like for sure it's wharf now. I think now like it's somewhere where, right, where you're right, like yes, yeah you wouldn't you right. would expect to be, mm-hmm. but I, I remember just being like it's crazy to me that the Exploratorium is here, but at least there's a reason to visit Fisherman's Wharf. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, what? Well, oh, and speaking of um, the Viking rowboat. Uh, oh well, that's that's an actual instrument. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's uh, yeah. Um, what is that? the nickel harp? It's, uh, it's what we call the. It's, it's, it's a Scandinavian <laughs> instrument called the nickel harp, nickel right. harpa, which is a fretted, a, a keyed violin. Like yeah, it's it's like a violin that that has you press like little typewriter keys. <laughs> right. Down. It's a really old instrument, sure. uh, sort of like a hurdy gurdy. If you have said like yeah, a hurdy gurdy yeah. with, with little typewriter, little you know things that they actually just press down the strings. Uh, from above, like frets, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. very strange. But that you know, the, then you can bow it manually. So it's an old, like, I believe, Swedish instrument called the nickel harp. But uh, yeah, we've got you know, that's 
let's call it the biking robot. Biking robot. It does kind of look like a biking robot. I mean, it's, it's, I, I felt yeah. like it's from Truth and Advertising Department, right. you know? Yeah. <laughs> it, looks, it looks like a, a biking robot, you know? Yeah, it's, like, it's seaworthy. Yeah, it's, sure. Yeah. You know, you could just like, yeah. I call that the, the, uh, the Planet of the Apes school of description. What's this uh -huh. film about? Well, it's a Planet of the Apes. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's right. I, I, I understand yeah. what you mean. I know what's going to be right. in this movie now. Right. <laughs> uh, it, it would be disingenuous to not uh, for me to let you go without circling back out about the about the new record. Uh, so, uh, oh, but, you know, there's a there's a John Kane Society question er, er, earlier in the chat. I noticed just like. I'm sure they have for the entire duration of the of the of the band. Uh, more like people are very curious as to the the dividing lines between things. What is the John Cain Society? So on and so on. Well, at this point, the John Cain Society is uh, uh, sort of a su support group related to, to what to what we do the uh sure. yeah. originally the john cain society which i i think has fallen into uh long long since um passed away um the the few folks that i knew that i got in touch with that were involved uh when i was first interested in the work of john cain were at the time ancient and had no one um sort of following through on trying to keep his his work uh current and that that was in the oh i would say the well early 90s and so um and sort of the the ideas of john kane that sort of we had started to immediately incorporate into our own band kind of mythos um it just sort of became a natural a uh, natural thing that we would then sort of take over the John Cain Society, a forced takeover in a way, and which is easy because the the members of the actual society were elderly and deceased mm. in that order. <laughs> That's yeah. <laughs> so um, it's a, I like that you added it was in that order. order. It yeah. was a really easy. It was a really easy takeover. It was really and easy. So, yeah. Well, we just yeah. started making. I just started making these <laughs> these pamphlets that then we oh, would yeah. hand out. You know, oh, hand sure. out at the shows, leaving things on the on the bar for people to you know a little something yeah. for them to read. They're gonna have a night out. They got to take something home. You know, maybe they probably not read it that night at the bar, but the the hope would that that the pamphlets would then just travel on their own, and uh, yeah, be you know be a a point of curiosity or at least confusion um in the, in the aftermath of the show so it, it, it's it's just a fine line really uh, yeah it, it, <laughs> what are you going for you know right right exactly well our, our, our reasons are our own and yeah uh i i found it heartening that the one of the sort of rallying cries for bringing things back was the bring back the apocalypse mm. I, 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 and again, I think it's that's also in if you know, you know, sort of situation, of course, because that's a song on one of the records. But because uh, I've largely referred to our <laughs> global pandemic and whatever happened afterwards as the mundane apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> so it's sort of like, well, yeah, everybody thinks the apocalypse is going to look like Mad Max or something and be very thrilling right. and you get to drive around in cool cars and, and do cool post-apocalyptic things like no it's going to be much more mundane and, and right. far more boring than you ever could have possibly imagined yeah uh but you i like have to stay in your house and then die that's <laughs> that's your job in that order right order of apocalypse. <laughs> yeah but i really i i thought that was such a great again rallying cry right because it's because there's uh because on one sense it is you're bringing back well, let's count. You got a studio album. You got like a film, right? And then there's potential for like. Uh, I mean, is it is it actually? Can we actually say there's going to be a, a touring of some manner or capacity at this point? There right? will certainly be a, a, a show shows. How many shows? How much of a tour we're able to do will right. will uh, sort of depend on on you know what we what we can sort of build up but we are we would are definitely going to play live shows like I, it would be yes it would it would hurt yeah that's to, this uh, is, to come this far without, without getting us doing all, the thing that we actually do, that you actually right? do yeah. right yeah 
and by the way, if this was a stage production of Peter Pan, this is where people would be asked to clap if they believe in fairies. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I do. I do. I believe. I believe. Yeah. Uh, and and we're I'll I'll drop the uh, Kickstarter link in the in the chat one more time. Of course, I'll do that in the show notes so everyone has the ability to do it. But uh, Thanks, br- bringing back the apocalypse is again it works because it's first of all it's one of your songs. Secondly, like the times that we live in, and thirdly, it's like you are kind of bringing back the apocalypse to a certain degree, right? Like it's a, but it it means it doesn't. What does that mean? Well, that could mean many, many different things. And I like the. I like the sense of adventure about it, and I think it it fits nicely with the motif of the band. Uh, I think that, um, well, first of all, I'm, 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 I'm thrilled to see three at all, have it all shake out. And I don't know if I actually kicked in on it yet, but I was, I definitely intended to. So I'll, <laughs> I'll rectify that before the end of the show. Uh, but I, go, I'm, go, go. I'm super excited to see this film. Uh, you know, that sounds awesome. Uh, I've seen some of the, the, a few of the stills. It looks like insane. I, and I mean that as a compliment. <laughs> to be clear. And um, I, there's there's merchandise. Again, you got a whole little Etsy store uh, going on in here. And, and it's not often that I can say I can really encourage people to genuinely check out a band's Kickstarter to be blown away. But check out their Kickstarter to be blown away. Mm. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if we have coffee mugs, uh, but, you know, that it's, <laughs> there is there is. I will one. buy one. I don't know where it is. <laughs> there is one coffee mug from that was made from the film with a logo for the show that is in the film there's a talk show in the film and there's a we must know more which is the name of the talk show and one of the songs on the record and there's a we must know more mug out there somewhere if anybody has it uh let me know i don't know what what happened to that (laughs) mug but there's it's a one of a kind at this point yeah um but you know it just i saw the logo the other day sneaking it into the album packaging with Jenya Chernoff the other day. one more session I think tonight with Jenya Chernoff to uh nice to finish the finish the elaborate packaging and uh, a lot of fun but yeah I found I came across the we must know more logo and I thought huh right the Good. coffee mugs where are they mm. <laughs> so, Carla so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up as a, yeah. as a as a staple of the of the of the KQED pledge drive I, yeah. can I <laughs> tell you me. can I tell you it was the uh, um it was a TARDIS mug and you put the, if you put the coffee in it, like the TARDIS would either appear or disappear. I can't remember how they would do it, but I thought um, that was basically the coolest thing I'd ever seen at like 10 or whatever. I saw that. Right. I like, yeah. yeah. I must have that. I must have it. Mm. Uh, and then, um, Oh, you could also, I mean, there's plenty of plays on words that you could do as well. You could do, you know, br- bring back the caffeination, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it lends itself well. You know. Yeah. Uh, bring back the apocalypse coffee mug. Yeah. <laughs> The donkeyed adversary of humanity pours a cup, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Right. A number of things that you yeah, can he does do. all kinds of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys, this has been great, Michael. This has been awesome. Um, last, I always close out the show. Uh, and again, if there's anything we missed, uh, I feel like this is pretty comprehensive. If there's anything that we missed that, that either of you wanted to get out there or uh, yeah, I'm happy to share it. I'm, happy, I'm just overjoyed to be a platform uh, for you to help spread the message. So before I steamroll my way out of here, um, I got coffee mugs to get to. Uh, but yeah, if you... Thank you, Conan. Yeah, thanks, thanks for great, great rapping with you. And great to, uh, <laughs> yeah, to know that a show like yours is there in it's... the world today. It's awesome. I, I I couldn't be happier to to be a part of it. Um, I, I do ask one can question at the at the end of the show, and you can choose to interpret it however you like. And uh, we'll we'll <laughs> we'll tag team this, uh, Michael. Let's start with you. All right. Why do you do what you do? Uh, well, it would be exceedingly boring to not do it. Um, uh, I yeah, I like making. The sound i'd rather be heard and not seen i don't know something something along those lines um just from a from a very early perspective of um noise making i'll just leave it at that all right (laughs) no same question same question yeah Uh, why do you do what you do hmm well, um, because I I have 
been around for a long time now. And if I was going to be doing some other approach to life, I would have had to have started doing that by now. Probably. And, um, you know, if I was to, to try to learn some other angle, you know, um, yeah. And, that, and I think that informs a lot of, about, you know, my, my approach to things is that it's just, it's, uh, you know, old habits die hard. And, you know, certainly there's the idea that maybe I should do something else uh, has, has come my way, you know, in, in recent years. And certainly when, when the, the great, you know, apocalypse of, of a couple of years ago hit, you know, the idea of like, huh, I'm going to have to learn how to do some other things. And <laughs> not, not that, you know, right, yeah. I, I have various things that I'm excited about doing, but, sure. um, there's very few of them that are, uh, as practical as they could be let's just put it that way so um yeah but then realizing that well that that you know that is a viable thing to do that is a way of life you know i have chosen a way of life and um i've got to stick with it now well i'm glad that you are <laughs> yeah the, the road to being a, an electrochemist is long and um, difficult. Yeah. Turns out they want qualifications. Who knew? I'm right. <laughs> I. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I was, yeah, I was just going to start listing various jobs that I've never done. How <laughs> 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 uh, much time we got anyway? <laughs> well, I, for one, really deeply appreciate uh, what you do do, and I'm very glad that you're back at doing it. And I, a lot of people agree with me, and they are right to do so. And I'm very excited to see whatever's next uh, for you. Thanks, and Conan, man. It's been a pleasure. You're, you're welcome on this show anytime you want. Carla can be freed from the the dimension of the chat and, and can be on as well. Uh, you know, uh, I'm just um, completely overjoyed that we're able to do this and uh, really appreciate you guys taking the time. All right, right on. Thank you. We'll we'll see you out there in America. Yeah, somewhere in America. <laughs> Take care, guys. Right? Uh, Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Yeah. Oh, cool town. I, I know. I know a guy. I'm the yeah. Guy. I'm the guy. All right. <laughs> All right take care, guys. See All ya. Right. There they go. Michael Nils. That's a Sleepy Time Grill Museum. Uh, I dropped the Kickstarter link in multiple times uh, in the in the chat. I will do so in the show notes as well, as I mentioned. Uh, couldn't be happier with those. If you're for, it's your first time at Protonic Reversal, uh, again, uh, it's a silly ask, but it isn't silly at all. Feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, I do these kinds of talks all the time uh, with artists just like this band. And not that there's anyone just like this band, but you get the idea. Um, let's hear let's hear Bring Back the Apocalypse. I'm going to play us out on that, and then I'll uh, close down the show. Thanks for listening, everyone.
Bring back the apocalypse. Sleep at Time Gorilla Museum. Fantastic. So there you go. This has been another episode of Patronic Reversal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you ever so much for listening to it. Uh, get that Kickstarter. Again, it's in the show notes. SGM 2024. Hashtag SGM 2024. And seriously, check it out. I mean, even if you yeah, even if you don't have any money, it's just, it's worth checking out to see the, the presentation. It's something to hold. But, of course, you can also get all their music. Sleep with Time Grill Museum. I think one.bandcamp.com is a uh, place go for that. And, uh, yeah, let's have them back when maybe when uh, later on when some stuff happens. Anyway, but this has been Code Neutron's Protonic Reversal. Thank you ever so very much for listening to it. This show airs Thursdays, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific, streaming live on YouTube and Twitch. Podcast later for free. Always. ProtonicReversal.com. However, if you like the show or even just a single episode, $1 a month at patreon.com slash ProtonicReversal. That helps support the show, keeps the lights on, Signing off. keeps the cats and the cat food, you know, all that good stuff. That's appreciated. If you do like the show, voice. please feel free to share around to the world at large. Like, I've subscribe on your platform of choice. 50,000 watts of power. Even leaving a review, as silly as that sounds, that helps beat back the almighty algorithm. I the air. Anything else? I think that's pretty good. Got a bunch of good stuff coming up. Thanks for listening, as always. Stay safe out there. Can you hear me now? Out Check on Route 128, you're dark and lonely. I got my radio on. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? to my top 10. I'd like to thank our sponsor. But we haven't got a sponsor. Not if you were the last man on earth. She was prepared to prove it. This one goes out to a special girl. There is no special girl! It's the... It's the end of radio!
Radio. The last announcer plays the last record. The last what? Leaves the transmitter. Circles the globe in search of a listener. Can you hear me now? Broadcasting if there's no one there to receive. It's the end of radio. As we come to the close of our broadcast day. See? <laughs> 